video is either going to be very informative or very uncomfortable. Let's find out. <laughs> I have kind of wanted to broach this subject a little bit on my channel for a very long time and I never felt really comfortable doing it. But I wanted to just make my channel a comfortable place where we can talk about this kind of stuff because I talk about it on my Tumblr a lot, I talk about it on my Twitter sometimes, I talk about it on my Instagram even sometimes, but I've never really talked about my sexuality on YouTube. And I'm not talking about my sexuality as in like what I identify as. More so, I've always kind of felt like this connection to you guys like I am an older sister or someone that can talk about things that might be uncomfortable. Sex and, and kind of sexuality and my body is something that we haven't really discussed. So I figured we could do that. Before we get into the actual Q&A, I just want to say that the reason why I'm doing this is because I grew up uh, in a town that was very, very Christian, very religious. I was raised very, very Christian, and I did not really know a whole lot about sex or my sexuality growing up, and I was not taught to kind of prioritize that in my life. And only as I've gotten older have I realized how important your sexuality is, whether you're religious or not. I think I identifying a certain way and, and figuring out what your viewpoint on sex is is very important. And also, having kind of a sex-negative view for a large portion of my um, adolescence wasn't good in my eyes. And now I really am sad that that was how I viewed sex for a very long time. And as I've gotten older, I've realized how important our relationship with sex is and how being more open and able to talk about sex makes things destigmatized. We stop sexualizing women. We can be more open with ourselves and realize that our bodies are just our bodies and sex is just a human behavior. And I think that all of that is really important and I want to impart that upon anyone who's younger than me watching this. Sex isn't scary. It's something that everyone does. It's not special. It's not like fireworks at the crack of dawn. Amazing. It's just sex. Like that's it. It's a human function and it can be amazing. It can be detrimental in many circumstances, but it's just sex. That's it. <laughs> and I wish someone had told me that growing up, that it's not as big of a deal as we all try to make it out to be. It's just sex. Like your mom had it, your dad had it, probably several times before you were even conceived. That being said, it can be a big deal if you don't handle it correctly. And that's why I wanted to do this Q&A. So if there was anything that you had questions about and anything that you were too uncomfortable to talk to your authoritative figure about or your school wasn't teaching you proper sex ed, I can somehow help in some facet. And also the comment section of this video can be kind of like a forum where anything that you have questions about, I'm sure there are older people or just more knowledgeable people that would be more than happy to help you in the comments. So I I highly encourage you guys to really like go at it down in the comments. Not in a sexy way, you animals, but... <laughs> okay, now without further ado, these questions are going to be sex related. They can be about anything. What I think about sex, tips and tricks, whatever it is. Whatever you guys have questions about, that's exactly what I'm answering. So, yes, I have my laptop. I tweeted out. I have a lot of questions on Tumblr. But Tumblr tends to be a little bit more explicit, and as we all know, now YouTube hates anything sexual. So, that's not gonna stop me. I don't make any money off of AdSense, so who cares. First question, was your first time painful in any way? This question's really interesting to me because I remember growing up, uh, that was a huge thing. It was like losing your virginity was super painful, or like it was never fun for the girl, or it was kind of something you just had to get over with. My first time was kind of painful, but it's because I wasn't knowledgeable enough to put forth the effort to make it fun for myself. And if you're new to sex and you're nervous and you want your first time to be fun and not just like uncomfortable in any way, uh, lube is your best friend. Lube, 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 lube! So much lube everywhere! Lube everything! Keep in mind that women take a lot more to get revved up for sex than men do. And I don't mean that in like a sexist way, and it's not a bad thing. I mean that in the sense that like, you need to be aroused before anything goes in or out, honey. Honey dear. So start with a couple fingers. Don't just go straight, straight dick the first time. <laughs> Next question, which kind of ties into the last question. Do you believe virginity is an old concept? Like, is it just one of those societal norms now, but meant something different back then? Virginity is a testy subject for a lot of people. So I'm just going to give my opinion, and this is not something that you necessarily have to take to heart, but this is coming from someone who was told that my virginity was like special and precious and if you were a delicate little flower that would be ruined by a penis. I think virginity is bullshit. I hate the idea of virginity because it, it, it basically validates the idea that women are like precious little flowers that can't 
like participate in sexual things without being ruined. Uh, and I know that men can also lose their virginity and it's a big deal, but for whatever reason in Western society I feel like we give men a lot of like bravado and pride for losing their virginity and It's just all stupid, isn't it? Like it's just all dumb. Uh, I would say that Personally my vagina can take more of a beating than a penis ever can So I think virginity is stupid because I think it kind of perpetuates this idea that you're losing something when you have sex for the first time, but you're not. You're gaining something. You're gaining a new experience. You're opening yourself up into a new world. And if you're being safe and it's consensual and there's nothing wrong with that, then I don't see how losing something is the proper term. Popping your cherry, breaking your hymen, all of that is not actually true. Like, all of it's just a little bit falsified. Your first time, you don't have to, like, bleed and rip and have, like, this horrible time and, like, that counts as losing your virginity. That's such a negative way to see your first time of having sex. First of all, your hymen could be gone before you ever even think about having sex. Mine went away when I was doing cheerleading. I think I did a split too high and, honey, that thing ripped in half. And some people aren't even born with a hymen. Some people have, like, a fully covered vagina. There's, like, a million different variations of the female genitalia. So to put ourselves in a box and say, when you lose this one specific fold of fabric on your body, you then are no longer a virgin. I think that's stupid. Virginity? Pfft. That being said, if that's something that's precious to you and it's important to you, good on you. It's just not really to me. How to not get pregnant. Ooh, that's a very important topic and I should really do a whole video about this. The good thing is we are one of the first generations that gets to learn all about sex online. So number one thing that I can tell you is to just research every method of contraceptive. And just to start off, condoms. Condoms are great. Diaphragms are great. I used to use the sponge. I'm currently on NuvaRing right now, which I like, although it makes my skin awful, so I'm kind of looking for a good solution to that. In general, do your research. Pregnancy happens when there's ignorance and or you want to get pregnant. Also, I just kind of want to talk about this for a second. It's not as easy to get pregnant as you think it is. I know a lot of people when they first start having sex are very nervous about like, suddenly getting pregnant when they're 17 years old or 18 years old and you worry about that kind of thing. But in reality, if you're safe, if you're using condoms, if you are on birth control and you're following the rules of that contraceptive, you're not gonna get pregnant. So don't get an anxiety around being pregnant constantly because I know I was like that when I first started having sex and I know a lot of people are like that. If you are being careful and you do your research and you make sure that you're using your contraceptive appropriately, you ain't gonna have babies, girl or guy you're gonna be fine. Next question, how do you say no and not seem too rude? You are never rude if you say no. Let me tell you, never. I don't care if you're dating someone, I don't care if you are married, I don't care if this is a one night stand, or a guy that you just met at a club, or a girl that you just met at a club. It is always 100% okay to say no. If you feel uncomfortable, if you feel like you just wanna wait, whatever it is, you can say no. You have no obligation to get someone's rocks off. Let me tell you, you are your own autonomous body and you are in control of it. And if you don't want anyone up in your temple, you do not have to let them in. I love this phrasing, not seem too rude. Being an independent person is not being rude. Like having an opinion about your own body is not being rude. And this is definitely a young girl that's tweeting me this. So I just wanna to say to any young girl out there and young guys, if someone's pressuring you to have sex and you want to say no, you don't have to feel like you're being a bad person for doing that. Someone else's like orgasm or like sexuality is not your responsibility at all. They can find someone else if that's their priority in their life. You're never being rude, you just have to say no. And this is something that leads me to my next question. Someone said, just chat about consent for a bit, please. Ha ha ha! This is something that's been in the news quite a bit lately uh, and, and just talked about a lot because lately, which is amazing, we've opened up a bigger discussion about rape and sexual assault and just kind of, we're down to talk about that. You know what I mean? We're all down to discuss this now and we're not shaming women for coming forward with anything. The media shames women for it. Conservative parties might shame women for it. But us, as a generation, I have never found a more sex positive, amazing feminist group of people than the people who watch me or that I follow online. I think it's an amazing trend. Uh, but just to reiterate, consent. Consent is just making sure that both parties are happy with what's going on sexually. And that means that there is a yes from both parties that we are both down for this, okay? And if you have even like an ounce of like 
nah, not really feeling it, you say no. You say no and you walk away from the situation. Like I said before, you are not in charge of anyone else's blue balls. Like you could run off, do your own thing, happy, breeze through a meadow, go masturbate if you want to. Like you don't have to deal with anyone else's sexuality. And on the same note, if you are someone who has said no and then someone has stepped over a bound, that is sexual assault. And if it goes any further than that, it can be considered rape. We just need to be careful and keep other people accountable just as much as we keep ourselves accountable. So when you're in a situation that could be sketchy or you feel like you do not consent to a sexual relation you're about to have with someone, no is no. No means no. So just say no. And if they try to push it any further, call the fucking police. It's sexual will assault. Not a funny subject, but thought a little John Ralphio make, might make that a little bit better. Next question. What are your views on saving yourself for marriage? I don't want to open a whole big old can of worms on this, but I was taught growing up that that was the way to do it. Uh, I didn't have necessarily the sexual education that was like, you have sex to have babies, but I was told that you could only have sex in marriage safely and that any sex outside of marriage was gonna like be sinful or awful in some way. I clearly don't believe that anymore, or I am a complete heathen to myself. Uh, I basically live with my boyfriend, so it's... We sleep on the same bed, if you know what I mean. <laughs> for anyone who has this kind of question about saving yourself for marriage, this is 100% a personal choice, because I know a lot of people that um, have saved themselves for marriage and had very happy marriages. Um, a lot of times that's because they talk about sex even before marriage, and they have a healthy sexual relationship before marriage. And that doesn't mean necessarily that they're having sex, but they're kind of like excited about it together. Like I know one person that I worked with a little while back said that he was really excited because him and his girlfriend had never had sex before and they were excited because they were going to be the only people that they ever had sex with and they thought that was special and amazing. I think that's great for some people. I don't think that that should be a standard for anyone, just like I don't think it should be a standard that everyone needs to have orgies all the time. I think that your sexuality is something that you need to you know, explore yourself and find a partner that's on the same mentality as you. As far as my views on saving yourself for marriage, fuck that and fuck me. I don't believe in it. Mainly because I'm one of those people where, like, having sex with someone is an integral part of my relationship. Like, I feel like that's where a lot of my closeness comes in. Like, togetherness and, like, camaraderie and, like, our sexual relationship are all things that kind of tie in together. I think sex is really important in my relationships, which is why I have not like waited until I'm married. People can take the idea of marriage as being a sexual standard and make it like, like you're only okay if you're having sex in marriage and that marriage is somehow this like higher power that will keep you and your partner safe. And that kind of creates ignorance because you can be unsafe in sex and have unwanted pregnancies, you can have cheating. Also, I think that sometimes this can perpetuate the idea of like, why buy the cow when you can have the milk? Like someone's just gonna date you and like have sex with you and then dispose of you, which I think is the dumbest thing in the entire world, which is why I don't wanna make marriage a standard for my sex life. I don't wanna make that like the end goal so that you can have sex with me. Like, oh my God, let's get married so you can finally stuck it in. Like, no, have sex with me because I love you and because this is consensual and because Honey, I'm horny sometimes. Although I do completely understand why some people find that a very important standard in their lives and I would never disrespect that. How do you handle a situation where no matter if you say yes or no, you're still being called a slut and shamed? This is, this makes me really upset every time I hear someone talk about this because, oh, I just, it just makes me so sad. Whether you're a slut or someone who's like uptight, those are two words that I think should never be connotated with sex. And I think it's so gross that that's something that someone could call you, because you also look like a young girl and that makes me very sad. You gotta say fuck it. You really gotta say fuck it. Like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck society, fuck it. There is no way that Google is putting ads on my video. <laughs> I got to that point probably a year and a half ago, two years ago, where I was just like, people are gonna judge me regardless of what I do. So I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. As long as it's not hurting anyone else, I don't care anymore. And I know that's like a hard place to get to, but I think that entire like hard place to get to is because you're still worried about what other people think. 
I've come to the realization that I'm just like anyone else and I make judgments and I'm stupid sometimes and so I expect that of other people. Other people are stupid and make judgments sometimes. So fuck their opinions. They're not any better than me. Fuck you. Someone said, what should you do immediately and routinely after having sex? This is a great question. Pee. Pee after sex. Whether you're a guy or a girl. I suffered so many UTIs. So many UTIs. Because I didn't pee right after sex and clear out my urethra. Pee after sex. Or shower after sex. Do whatever you can to keep yourself clean, okay? Someone said, Mom, does your vagina leak? Yes, everyone's vagina leaks all the time. It's okay. It just happens. Your vagina is this amazing thing. Basically, the female reproductive system is an amazing thing that is like a self-cleaning organ. So don't douche. Never clean up in your veg. You don't need to. It cleans itself. You can clean your labia or like anything around there, your vulva, uh, with non-scented products. Like don't stick up a pipe cleaner and really, you know, don't do that. <laughs> Someone asked me if Will has a big dick. He's very tall and he has big hands. Alright guys, so that is the last question that I'm going to answer just because we have gone through quite a few. Um, but I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Thank you to everyone who asked me questions on my Twitter. Uh, all of these I thought were really, really good and constructive. And I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that I was somehow helpful in any way. If you want to see more like sex positive talk or just kind of like learn more about your body, definitely go check out Hannah Witten's channel. I'll leave it in the description box. Um, and on top of that, if you liked this video and you want this to be kind of a series, because trust me, questions about sex are endless, then uh, we can definitely do more of this. So make sure to give this video a like if you liked it and think that I should do more. Once again, I want the comment section to be a very positive, amazing place. So any other questions that you have, leave them in the comments below. I'll answer some of them. I'm sure that you guys as a community can answer a lot of questions as well. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys next week. Bye!